Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a quick video to show you how to get the Elisa Sample Pad 4 set up with your GarageBand Tyco instrument or Logic. It's the same, uh, same setup. So, we're going to start with the most basic settings, which are the global settings. Global settings are going to affect everything, regardless what kit we're in, anything. It's going to affect everything that's going through the sample pad. So we're going to be looking at MIDI. So to get to the uh, global settings menu, we're going to press the left and up arrow keys. We're going to press the right arrow key now to select MIDI. You want your global settings set to channel 1 for here. Receive channel, I just leave set to all. But the send channel is affecting which channel your computer is receiving the information on. So we're sending information from the sample pad to the computer or to your iPhone or whatever device you're using. But GarageBand will only be able to see information that is sent on channel 1. So if you're using Logic, you can do it on whatever channel you want. But if you're using GarageBand with an iPhone or an iPad, you want this set to channel 1. Okay. So now to exit that menu, we're just going to press these two buttons together again. We'll do it. Now let's go over the sample pad setup. So the sample pad has four different drum pads. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Each of the, the settings for each pad are reflected in this screen down here. To select a pad and change its settings, you just tap on it. So now I just selected pad number three, okay? And it says pad three right here. Um, and now I have all the settings for that. If I want to change the top right pad, pad two, I just tap it. And then I've got the settings that I can change for that pad. So most of these settings on this screen we're not gonna worry about, but I want to let you know that the pad information for each of these four separate pads is contained within a kit. So kit number one, has the information that I've got set up for all four of these pads, okay? And that's what is contained within a kit. So now looking at the sample pad menu for kit number one, I'm gonna scroll up to here so you can see this. You can scroll up and down in the menu by using the up and down arrow keys. So now I'm in kit number one on my sample pad, and we're gonna go through the information that's contained uh, for num kit number one. Most of this you can ignore, okay? So we're not gonna pay attention to location, the pad number, we already went over that. You can ignore this instrument here. You can ignore tuning, reverb, pan, and level. Those are all irrelevant because we're using a MIDI instrument where it's controlled externally. Whoops. MIDI number. This is the number we're going to want to take a look at. So when we're using MIDI, we're, we're sending a trigger number or we're sending information from this sample pad to the computer. But we have to, the computer has to know what instrument we want to trigger. So that's what this MIDI trigger number is. Okay, so the MIDI Here we have the MIDI note mapping sheet for the GarageBand Tyco instrument. We can use any of these instruments on our sample pad. And the way you're going you're gonna to navigate this is by looking at the MIDI trigger number. So that white box in the middle says MIDI note slash MIDI trigger number. And I've got each of the sounds for each of the Tyco mapped out for you already. So you don't have to do that. So for example, if I want to use the Odaiko, that big drum in the middle, just above the white box. If I want the Doan sound, I can see that Doan is number 36. If I want the press sound, I can use number 31. And if I want the rim shots, I can use number 33. So now I'm back on my sample pad menu, and I can change my kit to match that Odaiko. So if you remember, 33 was the rim shot. So pad number two, the top right, is set up right now for the rim shot for that Odaiko. Um, pad number one is also set to that rim shot from the Odaiko. And then my main pads, that's set to number 36, and that's also set to number 36. So my main pads are set to the dome sound from the Odaiko, and the top pads are set to the rim shots. And if I wanted to change that to anything else, all I have to do is select the pad I want. So say I want to change pad four, I tap pad four, and then press the right arrow key to change that drum sound. I don't know what's on 40. So the way you change your sound is by using the different MIDI trigger number. And now if I want to save that kit so I don't have to change these settings every time, then I can go to the Save menu. So Save menu is the bottom arrow and the right arrow. I can press that together. And then I'm going to go to Save Kit. And now it has saved that kit for me um, to kit number one. 
A couple of other settings you want to look at here. First of all, the sensitivity. So I have my drum pad set up to five, most of them to five or sometimes six. And that seems to help me avoid any crosstalk issues. Crosstalk uh, refers to when I play one drum pad, I sometimes trigger another one accidentally. Um, even though I didn't play that pad, the vibrations uh, accidentally trigger that. So this happens when you, are, when you have your sample pad, for example, set up on a table. Every time you play these pads, the table is vibrating. And sometimes those vibrations um, will set off another pad on your sample pad. So the sensitivity here will help you avoid crosstalk problems. But um, to get the least amount of crosstalk, you want to have your sample pad suspended. So let me show you what I'm using here to, to set up my sample pad. So this is my sample pad setup, how I keep the crosstalk from happening. <laughs> so I've got the sample pad mounted to a cymbal clamp <clears throat> using the Elisa sample pad drum mount. It's just a, a drum mount that connects to the bottom of the sample pad and then can connect to a cymbal clamp. So then the cymbal clamp is connected to my uh, boom arm and then the boom arm is connected to the cymbal stand. So anytime you buy a cymbal stand, you usually get a boom attachment with it. And then you just have to get a cymbal clamp to go on there and the drum mount and you've got it set up. And this can be suspended now over the middle of my table, which I do for my Tyco videos. And it keeps a lot of the crosstalk from happening. In fact, I don't get any crosstalk when using this setup. I have not had a single problem with crosstalk at all. So it removed the crosstalk pretty much 100%. So that's all there is to it. Again, you've got a bunch of different kits in the sample pad. So you've got, I think, 10 different kits that you can change and save. So like I've got this one set up for Shime. I've got this one set up for uh, Chudaiko, right? I've got this one, one of the Odaikos. That's the Okedo. Re I really like that one a lot. Um, another Odaiko. So I've got each of the 10 kits set up uh, to reflect different drums in the GarageBand Taiko instrument. So if you have any questions on, on getting these set up or have any problems still, then feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.